So thank you again for joining. My name is Sean Kennedy. I am uh, a member of the OSLC Communications Work Group, and that's the work group that's been putting on this webcast series. And we're very excited today for the, uh, the first time to have the steering committee joining us and uh, taking a chance to share some thoughts, uh, take a look back at the year, uh, look at what's ahead, and uh, also give you a chance to meet them. So on today's call today, we have uh, four of the six members of the steering committee, uh, Reiner, Bola, Mick, and John. And uh, they will take a, a chance when it's opportune to introduce themselves at greater length as we go along. Uh, I myself am also on the call, as is quite obvious. And I'm the operations coordinator for the steering committee, as is uh, Steve Spiker, who is the uh, technical coordinator and assists the steering committee with uh, all sorts of technical issues. So to begin our presentation today, we will start with an agenda, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, what is OSLC. As, uh, some people may uh, uh, may be coming to this meeting for the first time today, and uh, we'll take a chance to learn a bit more of that. We'll do a kind of a look back at the year that has been, and uh, also take a look at what what the future. Uh, what future the steering committee has has envisioned for OSLC. And uh, as I mentioned before, there's an opportunity for questions and discussions at the end. So to begin with our first topic, I will I will uh, turn the microphone to uh, Mick Kirsten, a uh, steering committee member and the CEO of TaskTop, and he'll uh, give us a little bit of what is OSLC. All right, so my name is Nick Kurtz. I'm the CEO of Tazop Technologies, and I've involved, been involved in interoperability on lifecycle tools and application lifecycle management and how developers fit into lifecycle management um, for most of my career. Uh, m more recently with uh, the creation of the Quantum Project, as well as with Tazop's commercial activities around ALM interoperability. So right from the get-go, we noticed that it was very difficult to connect different stakeholders in the life cycle, and even the same kind of stakeholders like developers who are using different tools because they were collaborating with different people in their department, people in, in other companies, people in open source. Uh, we had tool makers who were, each of which was basically creating a silo of information in the life cycle, uh, be that a lightweight issue tracker or a new kind of agile project management tool or a requirement management tool very well suited to business analysts but less well suited to developers. So, these silos needed to start talking to each other because we saw this tremendous proliferation of lifecycle management tools, I think even more so than we've seen in other domains of, of enterprise collaboration, where there have actually been more standards for us to leverage. So we, in email, for example, standards like, like IMAP and POP, none of these vendors were implementing in their tools. But the interoperability need just in, grew and grew as a heterogeneity in these lifecycle and it, stacks and these and these ALM stacks group. So tool makers had these this growing burden of integrating with each other's tools. We had tool managers who somehow needed to make sense of the tools that had been deployed into their part of the organization. So if there was often there would be one type of quality management tool deployed versus a different kind of developer friendly issue tracker versus a, uh, an enterprise scale like several management tool and none of these were in interchange data. So there was, there was no ability to, for information to flow between the tools. There was no ability uh, to be able to report on the life cycle in any cohesive way. Tool users, you know, they were choosing the best of breed tools because these, the life cycle management tools evolved in such a way that they became increasingly complex and they became very special purpose. So if you were doing one flavor of Agile, you wanted to get that latest Kanban tool. Uh, if you were still in a product line that had a lot of legacy code in it, chances are you were on an, on an older tool, on a more traditional waterfall tool, for example. Uh, and if you're now deploying DevOps, you get another set of tools. So we've had the specialization, and the specialization has been driven by end users. The problem is that the end users have then, you know, by selecting tools that work for them and not having any standards or any mechanisms for connecting to the others, have now filed themselves away from other parts of the organization. And then, you know, you've got systems integrators who are trying to roll together some kind of stack around this. And, uh, again, this, this heterogeneity means that the information cannot flow 
between different parts of the software delivery disciplines, between different stages of the life cycle, and even more interestingly, between different organizations. So the fact that if one organization is do, if you've outsourced some of your, uh, some of your development, some of your quality management, chances are that information is locked up in a different silo. And communicating on it by doing, trying to do exports of this information, by trying to do spreadsheets that summarize it, is, is a manual process which just cannot scale as we're trying to, you know, as an industry, scale up our capacity for software delivery. So with OSLC, and looking at the next slide right now, we've realized that what needs to happen is that this style of information, say between requirements management, change management, artifacts, issue trackers, uh, automation and builds, monitoring of the life cycle or of applications, as well as quality management, has to be connected. And the goal of OSLC to be this, is this open and scalable approach for life cycle integration, for tool vendors to implement a standard that allows them to talk to other tools when they specialize in one part of the life cycle or when they have to interoperate with, uh, with another vendor's tool. So the whole goal is to enable this heterogeneous life cycle and basically to get out of this world where all the information is locked up in silos and meets the needs of one set of stakeholders or one vendor but does not meet the needs of, of the large-scale software delivery organization as a whole. So the goal here is that we need just enough integration to connect up these artifacts so the requirement in one system can depend on a uh, defect tracked in another system. Um, it can be implemented by a change set made to, you know, a new system, a new, in a new SDM system or a change made in, the, in even an open source project. So we have this traceability across the entire life cycle. And that's, you know, I think a key tenet around OSLC is that we can actually trace across these artifacts and link all of this data so that we don't you know, lose control of the artifact, so we always know which changes are implemented by which requirement, and we have the best practices needed for large-scale software delivery in, the, in a heterogeneous environment. Um, and then we have this better visibility. So uh, I think, in summary, that's, those are our goals, and we've come up with a set of, stand, set of standards that enable that, that enable that kind of linking of data uh, and querying and abstractions for the common artifacts, such as change management artifacts, requirements management artifacts, quality management artifacts, and automation artifacts uh, that participate in the life cycle. Okay, Mick, this is uh, John. Thanks for that introduction. And let's now transition into an exploration of what's going on in the last year. And there's a whole range of things. And if we transition here to the next chart, you can see this list of activities. So a range of webcasts. This is the next in the series. Perhaps 20 webcasts are available on a whole range of topics, and those are archived for your uh, ongoing uh, enjoyment. Uh, we had a community survey to collect information about you, your background, your perceptions about OSLC, and your degree of participation. A range of work groups covering uh, some new areas from uh, cross-domain baselines and configurations to understanding system health to identifying and reconciling computer systems, ongoing progress on specifications, and you can uh, track that. Again, all of these links here are things that you can follow uh, subsequently. We kicked off a uh, effort with W3C, a standardization effort there, that we seeded with part of our work in the OSLC core to define the best practices for linked data, taking the uh, principles established by Tim Berners-Lee and the linked data movement and um, articulating a set of work of um, best practices around that, focusing on how to work with resources and resource containers and uh, made progress on that um, over the last year. We have a range of toolkits and support for people um, who want to do things in Java, the Eclipse Leo effort. We have some Perl libraries, and for those uh, who are in .NET, OSLC for .NET, in, in all these cases, we have um, SDK, some test suites on the Eclipse side, and um, reference implementations or examples to help people who are being exposed uh, to OSLC for the first time and want to dig in to, to see it in, in practice. And then also, we've transitioned our, our governance 
uh, from what we've had in the past uh, to uh, establishing a steering committee that we that we have right now. I guess I missed the point here of additional collaboration infrastructure along the way. Let's just explore a touch um, what we have in the area of governance. Uh, the next chart has a graphic uh, that lets us look at that. And we can see this transition from uh, an ad hoc state of um, things happening in the community very, fairly informally and the governance being really managed by IBM, transitioning now to a place where we actually have a set of membership roles with their requirements and responsibilities, and in addition, have put together a steering committee that's responsible for, for providing uh, direction uh, in terms of business and the operational elements, the place where uh, work groups are um, created and uh, decommissioned, sets up the right interactions with uh, standards organizations, and provides uh, guidance on the evolution of the governance itself. So that's the state that we're in right now, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on where we're going from there, but this is today's state. And so maybe this is the right time for us to introduce uh, the steering committees that we have on the line. I got the honor to get to start a list of introductions from the steering committee. My name is Rainer Ersch. I'm one of those many Rainer Ersch on the right-hand side in the participation list. I think I know what's happened. Some may use my, my registration of the webcast, and uh, you're very welcome to join us here. Uh, maybe you can just inform me when you, when you just use my, my registration, who you are, so that we have to have an idea. Just send me a mail back on my, on my invitation. So my name is Rainer Ersch. I'm with Siemens for 33 years now, um, starting at a telecommunication division in now in a, in a research organization for almost 10 years. Over those 10 years, I was deeply involved in, in uh, engineering tool issues and interoperability in particular. So uh, we tried many, many uh, interoperability methods uh, Basically, all you can think of, starting from point-to-point -point integration, tool buses, uh, so-called uh, integrated tool suites from vendors. I particularly said so-called because tool suites never were really integrated. And uh, other data exchange formats and, and uh, replications and such. Some of them gave us short-term quick results, but on the longer run, we, we realized that they all have drawbacks and, and uh, problems. When I first heard about OSC, I, I almost got struck by, by a lightning and said, hey, this may actually work. This may solve all the issues what we have seen in the past and, and may give us really the chance to do a tool integration uh, that, that really solves the, or serves the need that we have in the engineering, in the engineering teams. Uh, but the technology is, is one side of the house, and, and uh, if you really want to make progress on interoperability, you really need a lively community that actually drives the effort and, and help, helps that the technology really makes it to the market and, and is relevant that, that we have enough players that buy into it. So that's the reason why I dedicated uh, time uh, to, to uh, and spend some effort and play an active role in the, in the community. And as the community grows, we are getting more and more supporters um, who share the same vision. Uh, as the title of this webcast says, uh, we are looking for leaders. Uh, that's what one of the big aims of this, of this webcast is, but we will come back later to this topic uh, during the course of the, of the talk today. Next one in line is Bola. So Bola, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, thank you very much, Raina. Hello, um, I'm Bola Otobi. I'm the research director for industry analyst firm Creative Intellect Consulting. Um, I'm involved in OSLC uh, because within the industry and, and actually across the market, there's a call for greater and better interoperability, um, and it has grown because of the rise in importance of software. And as an analyst firm researching the different software applications being developed, and uh, the multiple of, multitude of choo, uh, tools and processes being used, 
OSLC, in my opinion, offers a strategy for the right interoperability to occur in the right way. It also offers, um, in my opinion, an open platform that encourages support and engagement from across the industry and market landscape. Um, the community support of OSLC presents, a, for me, what I believe is a pragmatic approach to enabling different tools and tooling groups to work together. And this not only provides support for an ecosystem of integrated workflows, but does allow them to participate and collaborate at multiple levels, all of which I, I think you know, can actually help to encourage evolution and improvements, improvements from multiple angles, such as processes, tool, tooling, and skills. And all of this is really important to the myriad organizations and businesses we consult with on a daily basis. So for me, the wider value of interoperability is broad with tangible benefits. The benefits can be substantial, ranging from better traceability through to what I believe is more unified workflows and, and governance controls that collectively subscribe to you know, the overarching business demands and goal outcomes. But it does require engagement from all parts of the industries, from the industry and the marketplace, from analysts right through to the end user organization and uh, tooling vendors providers. So that's one of the reasons why I'm involved. And I think the next person on the um, talk is um, is Mick. Should I? Thanks, Bola. Yeah, my name is Mick Christian. I'm the CEO of Tassa and co-founder of Tassa Technologies. And uh, I've been working very closely both with the open source community and and uh, ISVs, so tool vendors who are Tassa partners on interoperability. And what we've learned in the process is that we're just without creating some kind of standards for, for interchange on these ALM artifacts, which are highly complex. So something like a change management artifact or, or an issue or a task is actually very difficult to save to something like a file and to create an in, in, interchange format for. Uh, we're just not going to scale to support the, you know, the variety and the diversity that we have in ALM stacks today. And all of the problems or all the benefits and, uh, and issues that, that Bola just identified, we're not going to have an answer to unless we get some kind of standardization focused on interchange formats, on query formats, on, on common data models and data types. And for this reason, uh, both myself and Tasks have been involved closely in OSLC from the start. So I'm going to jump in now. I'm John Wiegand, and I'm a distinguished engineer at IBM. I've been involved uh, building software for more than 25 years, and I've had this transition from uh, starting off as a tool user and seeing gaps in the uh, tools that I had to use, I transitioned to being a tool creator. But after a period of tool creation, I ran into uh, pain points and difficulty in the area of tool integration. I've been spending the last 15 years working on this uh, challenge of trying to bring tool sets together. And I've done and explored a range of things uh, with a, in a range of communities with um, more and less success. And we I think I'm a poster child for um, partial successes, both um, learning and, and incomplete solutions. And now what I'm seeing with OSLC, and the reason I'm supportive of this, is we have something that can learn from our, our failed experiments of the past and also our, our point successes here and there. Uh, and provide this ability to achieve loosely coupled yet loosely coupled pieces yet deliver high value integration and that combination is what's really interesting the ability for the various uh, tool creators uh, to do their work in in the way that makes sense to them but then to be able to bring these pieces together um, in the way that makes sense in my environment uh, that I can actually get the value that I need. So this world of heterogeneous tools coming together to solve real problems is one that's interesting to me. And so OSLC provides both the technical approach and then as has been shared by several others here, a community that supports this style of integration and fosters it and actually makes it something that can be more, more widely supported. So there's a few other pictures up here uh, who haven't uh, spoken. Andreas Keis, from EADS and David Ingram from Accenture, their steering committee members also, they couldn't join us for this webcast, um, but they are actively working with us 
And in addition, we have two staff positions. Sean Kennedy, who's our operations coordinator, he kicked off the call here, and he's the support behind our steering committee meetings. He facilitates our interactions with the community, and he assists us as a steering committee in completing our taxi, our, our work. He's, he's kind of the glue that, that holds us together. And Steve Spiker is our technical coordinator. He's the connection to the work group activity that's going on. He gives us background, expert opinion, technical guidance um, as we need it and as we're working as a steering committee. So I want to say thanks to uh, Sean and Steve for their support roles and uh, actually to the steering committee as a whole. It's We've we've had a good working relationship here over the last uh, eight months. It's been a, a good uh, period of time, and we look forward to the, the ongoing evolution. So let's transition ahead to to what's what's next and what's down the road, and we have some specific steps that we'll talk about subsequently. But before we do that, I thought it might be valuable to just share a minute or so uh, aspirationally. What, what do we see OSLC here for? Uh, we, we somewhat shared this, each of us as steering committee members, why we're involved, and that's really the, the underpinnings of where we're at. But I'm going to draw attention to a couple thoughts here. Uh, first is the technical approach. So we have the foundational elements for integration at OSLC, and the ability to work with linked data, to have the common protocols that we need, define the common vocabularies, establish that groundwork is critical. OSLC core to be able to address some cross-cutting concerns so you can handle the degree of commonality, but then domains. So each of the individual domains, and Mick enumerated several of these, uh, change management requirements, management quality management, et cetera, those are places where we want to have common vocabularies so that you can use a range of tools there, not being constrained to any one vendor's approach, but being able to bring together the environment that makes sense for you. So that tech, technical approach has a, is a fundamental um, basis for our work. But then, just because one has good technology, that's, that's a good starting point. But the real next step here is that OSLC is addressing the interesting integration challenges of the day. And that's what we're doing now, and that's what we anticipate in an ongoing way, that we are connecting the artifacts uh, and enabling the connection of those artifacts from idea formation to deployment and maintenance and beyond, and to enable the various activities across that life cycle, because we have all that data connected. So we can um, provide we this is the community, the various tool uh, vendors, the various tool users, and uh, the various integrators, the various roles here. We can actually automate, analyze, bring together these pieces so that they work together more effectively. But the key thought here is if there's an integration challenge, we would like OSLC to be the place that one comes to actually look at solutions for that. And when we have that um, name, that's OSLC becomes the place, and it's the place for some of us, but as it becomes the place for more, it'll then become the natural choice for standardizing the approach for loosely coupled integrations, not just in the traditional domains, but in a broader set of domains that are part of the life cycle. So that's somewhat what we're seeing um, and anticipating over the next uh, few years and beyond. So I think I'm going to hand the floor over to Steve at this point uh, to talk more about um, additional progress here on the governance. Thanks, John. So if we look at the the, the previous slide that was shown um, uh, when we talked about in this presentation, it was also used to talk about the the governance rollout um, as we did back in 2012. You know, when we look at this, some of the questions come up or uh, you look at, well, what's the future state? Um, we talked about the various options. And working with the, the steering committee, you know, the, we weighed out uh, a number of these options around becoming an independent foundation, joining a recognized uh, formal standard organization. Uh, but exactly what we're doing and when, I think, were the 
questions um, that we're, we're answering now. Uh, and if we move on to the, to the next slide, slide 14, talk about uh, the, you know, stepping up what we're doing with uh, through this uh, evolution towards uh, a more community-driven, independent uh, model. We look at the the three key things is we you know what we're doing. Uh, so what is that exactly? That's um, the we're looking at taking the the specification development work we're doing and, and moving it towards um, a standards organization, uh, set, uh, Oasis, which um, will allow us to to move more or less what we're doing today and the way we operate um, in a in a more or less seamless way uh, to Oasis. And there's some details available, and I won't get into to all that now. Um, we we talked, you know, what it is, but what, why are we doing it? Um, so, as sort of the the standard uh, talk with about standards is, you would want to go <coughs> to help increase the acceptance of both the product developers and the users, because you're at a at a place that the the industry recognizes as a, as a neutral ground for developing specifications and, and evolving the work, and then. And gathers a bit more uh, recognition for um, the work there, and it reuses a lot of the the known IP terms and governance that a lot of uh, companies are and organizations are familiar with. So um, it allows for uh, the freedom to to be able to collaborate in an open space uh, without those worries. Uh, also, uh, the key aspect is when. Uh, so we're looking at um, aligning with some of the uh, OASIS board approval dates, and that's uh, looking at the early May or May 1st this year uh, to have that. And you can see the details below the timing of that. Um, across the, the top of that is the, you know, the, the uh, dates for some of the 3 spec development, which that's, you know, a bit of maybe uh, the core spec itself and the domain groups follow their own timeline as well. Um, but we're looking through gathering and recruiting some new members so if there's interest um, in, in being involved in this uh, a founding member um, there's you know to reach out and, and, and uh, express your interest there um, we'll look to launch the member section after board approval sometime in the summer uh, and then after that you know looking to start to transition some of the technical committees or the work groups uh, along the way uh, so that that's a, a quick run through of of the uh, stepping up as far as the specification development through an, an open uh, standards development process, and I'll turn it back to uh, Reiner. Yes, thanks, Steve. So um, as already stated in my my introduction, the the title of the talk here today is we are looking for leaders. During the course of this talk, you heard a couple of things about OSSC steering committee, migration to OASIS, OSSC work groups, and other things. And a, there are a couple of things you can get involved in, in how you to become a leader or supporter or contributor. So if your company is, for example, already a member of OASIS, then uh, you can simply support our application for an OSSC member, uh, member section and technical committees there. So, this is always welcome, and, and uh, the, the more we supporters we have here, the easier and, and smoother the transition will probably go. But you can, there are other ways to get involved with OSSC. For example, you can contribute scenarios you may have in your working environment, you're working with others or on, and see that uh, this interoperability problem that's addressed by the scenario is not solved. You can simply turn in those scenarios to the, to the work groups and ask them to consider those in the next version of the specification or get in touch with you to discuss the details why you need those things and what you think if, uh, what you think the, the ideas could be to, to solve actually those interoperability uh, issues. You can participate in technical committees in the future uh, on, under OASIS. Today they are still called working, working groups. Uh, there's a little uh, thing you have to, to go through the, the IP um, the IP governance process and, and uh, um, state that, that all the technical input you're giving to the community can stay with the community and you're not claiming any patents later on on that. And as an OSOC member, 
you can also elect or get elected as a steering committee member uh, in the in the next period. What you also can do and is also always welcome is to make a public uh, statement about uh, your preference for OSC based integrations. Uh, we got a couple uh, from the European projects we are working in together uh, where they said that OSC will be the core part of their integration concepts, what they are trying to achieve within the course of, of those projects. But you can also create your own implementations and hopefully tell others about it. Um, you can share your experiences um, with integrations and you can also uh, donate parts of those if you want to to the LEO project so that others can have an easier start or can, can already use the things you have, have uh, developed and, and made available. So therefore, these are just four little examples how to get in, uh, involved if you want to know more. Uh, then uh, feel free to contact us on the next slide you will see our, our address how to get uh, to contact the, the OSSD steering committee, but they are on the openservices.net. There are many places where you can see addresses of working groups and others where you can simply get in touch with. So, but remember the technology is, even such a, such a, a great technology like OSSC is only as good as the community is that drives this technology. Therefore, we rely on you and therefore, we would like to ask you, get involved, get involved now. And that's our final statement for the presentation part. And then I, with that, I will hand over to Sean to take us through the question and answer section. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Reiner. And thank you to, uh, to everyone, uh, all the steering committee, and uh, to Steve as well, who took the time to present and uh, share this information today. I hope it has been useful to to everyone who has who's joined us and to everyone who's going to listen to this in the future. So now I'd like to, uh, to open up for any questions and uh, also give a chance for some discussion. We've, uh, I think we have a manageable group. If, uh, if we want to uh, go ahead and have a discussion on, on the phone right now, that will work well. If you have questions or comments and you don't want to speak up on the phone again, the third tab on the, uh, the right-hand sidebar, you can just type them in there and talk. Uh, so to, uh, to to kick us off, um, uh, as maybe you you think about some questions and uh, absorb the uh, the uh, materials that that you've had, um, I'll actually start with uh, with a question out to anyone, but I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, direct it initially to uh, to Matt uh, Berglund, who is has joined us on the call. Um, but just maybe to share with us, to share with everyone. Um, why OSLC import, has been important to you, um, maybe some of what you've done with OSLC, and also what do you want to, uh, to get from OSLC? Okay, thank you, Sean. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Berglund. I'm uh, working for Ericsson, the telecommunications company. Uh, I also have on the webcast my colleague Ludmilla Olson, so uh, we say hello, both of us. Uh, I'm working as an enterprise architect in the IT department of Ericsson, so I'm working corporately to, to assess R&D tooling wherever they are used within Ericsson throughout the whole company. And uh, as you may know, any large corporation is challenged by having so many organizations selecting different tool sets, and, and that is exactly the OSLC kind of challenge, how to bring this together. And in reality, it got even worse when the Agile transformation started to happen in Ericsson. We started to get so many more tools on board for Agile planning, Kanban, Scrum, you name it. And uh, also what happened that was that uh, the, the different type of roles in the company changed. People that earlier worked with uh, requirements management now came into the lower teams and work more with backlogs and other type of concepts. So overall, we are in a situation where we have very many tools on board, uh, both uh, good reasons and bad reasons for ending up there. Uh, and we started to look and search from the corporate group uh, what to do about this. And um, we realized that streamlining on just a few or one vendor is 
no longer feasible in the company. Instead, an integration approach is a must. And uh, uh, since we've been engaging with IBM Russian much over the years, uh, OSLC became quite early known to us, and we started to to see what what can we make out of this. And um, we're quite enthusiastic about OSLC, and we decided uh, spring 2012 uh, to make OSLC a prime uh, architectural standard in their R&D arena for integration. Uh, we are quite aware that OSLC has its limitations and it's in an early stage, but we want to leverage OSLC as far as it's possible. And uh, where it's not possible or feasible, we will still have to look into other strategies for, for, for gluing the remaining parts. And there are many of you vendors out there that would help you, us with that, which we, and we're also dialoguing with you. So um, said that, what have we then done? Well, uh, a bit of what Reiner presented, I'm, I'm glad you did. Two of the bullets we've been into, actually. Uh, we have started to uh, integrate some and adapt some of our in-house uh, proprietary tools to OSLC the CM spec. Uh, we have one uh, defect management tool and a also requirements management tool. And at least the first one has turned out quite successful and can integrate well with tools like RTC. Um, and we are right now exploring how much we can use wrappers or plugins, whatever they are called, for tools that are not yet OSLC compliant and see if they can make if the ecosystem work well with the other tools. Um, so that is the process we are in right now to see how much other vendor solutions can we glue together with OSLC. So we see one of the big challenges here is to um, uh, uh, get an ecosystem running around OSLC with a bit more vendors, actually. So um, mm -hmm. we, we need to get some of the larger uh, ALM tool vendors on board or PLM tool vendors on board. So when we meet them, that's the other bullet we work with. We constantly urge them to have a look at OSLC. We ask them, do you know about OSLC? We show them the web page. And we try to encourage them that OSLC would be something for them. And I believe we are actually getting some attention from a few of those vendors. And hopefully they, they will one day come with an OSLC adapted version of their tool. Uh, at least we have some indications. Um, the other challenge we see is um, in the term oil of agile is not only to cross connect between the different uh, roles and disciplines of working uh, in an, a life cycle between requirements, between quality management, between CM, uh, SEM systems, and other roles and functions. Uh, that we had that challenge already before. But because of Agile, we now also get a need to integrate what I call vertically. So high-level enterprise-grade management of requirement differs slightly from uh, a team-level requirements management. They normally call it um, epics and stories, and works in backlogs. And we see this pattern coming not only for requirements, also for test cases, also for uh, other uh, life cycle objects, that there is both the high ceremony management where we have all our regulatory requirements, ISO, etc., on how we work, uh, versus the agile and more loosely uh, uh, governed way of working in teams where you want to do fast iteration. So we need to manage both which probably means we need to uh, integrate tools that works both in the agile teams with the more enterprise-grade tools. And last thing is that another challenge we see forward is when we now loosely coupling the landscape of different type of tools, some of the focus will now move to the, 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 the health of those links and integrations and the health of the data in between the tools, how can we monitor that? 
a data warehouse or monitoring reporting type of uh, dashboard type of application that goes across uh, those tools. So not only connect the data in the back end, but also the user experience need to come into play in some way. And uh, pretty much that was what I would like to yeah, one thing we wish to do more is to get even more engaged with OSLC, and we'll see how far we can push it there. We need to find a bit of resources. But that's what we are today in Ericsson. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. that uh, and I hope you do find the resources to get more involved. And uh, based on based on the experiences you, you've just shared here in this in, in these few minutes, I, I would love to... Uh, to have you do a, a webcast as well. So hopefully we'll be able to arrange that in the future. Absolutely. Hi, this is uh, Steve Spike. I just wanted to respond to that as well and, and want to confirm what uh, Mats has suggested or, or it's, it's stated where he's encouraging the various vendors the, to support OSLC and, and looking through it, uh, adopter, adapters or other techniques to do it. And, and I can confirm that. I'm, I am hearing them and hearing, um, you know, uh, some of them contact uh, us directly looking for some implementation guidance and pointing them in the right direction. Uh, so I just want to keep encouraging folks to do that. It seems like it's, it's actually uh, working and we'll like to see some of those implementations start to surface more publicly in the future. Can, uh, this is <coughs> Bola Rotoby. And it's a question for um, Matt, uh, Matt, who's just spoken just now. Do you see a um, do you see a point where Ericsson um, or a time when Ericsson might um, stipulate um, some sort of interoperability support amongst all its you know sort of suppliers, or is that you know kind of a, a, a road too far? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not too far. We have actually demanded from some of the suppliers, and because we're under NDA, I will not go into the details there. But we have said. To be part of our ecosystem, you should support OSLC. And, of course, they will have to work on their business case and their roadmap and their concerns about that. But uh, we, are on a, we are actually seeing a, a – we demonstrated our successes with the integration with the in-house tool for defect management in uh, IBM RTC. And uh, that uh, actually made them starting to believe in it. And we hope that we will see results out of this. So stipulating, you can take it different far, but uh, we see that they have understood the message, and uh, we hope that uh, this will lead to uh, compliance with all something, at least some of the specs. Cool. That's excellent. Yeah, and very interesting. Uh, so I have a, a couple questions in the chat from Alan Barron, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and ask them now, and then we can see if there are more on the phone, and uh, go ahead and type into the chat if you have a question as well. So the the first is with the move to Oasis, does the uh, steering committee think that the focus uh, on OSLC will disperse? Um, will the existing board continue to participate at at Oasis? Um, I don't know if I should pick on someone or if someone just wants to volunteer to uh, to tackle uh, those those couple questions. So I can jump in in terms of uh, my participation and, and task outs, but I think, you know, it's, we see it as, a, as an opportunity to amplify our participation because you know, anything that increases the reach, um, and we see Oasis as, a, as an important stepping stone to that, um, will also increase our participation. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not sure, maybe, Alan, if you... Um, if you want to type into the chat, I'm realizing maybe about the disperse a little more thoughts about that, so we can follow up. Maybe yeah, I can share a thought, Sean, while okay. uh, Alan's typing. Yeah. Is with the move to Oasis, what we'll be able to do is set up a member section there, so we'll be focused at Oasis um, on our OSLC concerns. So we're we're leveraging the Oasis for the value that it provides to us, but still preserving the focus in our our style of interaction and having this cycle integration uh, priority and emphasis in our in our collaboration. So we as a steering committee will continue to um, engage in appropriate ways and we'll we'll have um, the, the technical uh, committee 
will will adapt, but the intent is that things will continue and grow. And I really like mixed thought, which is it'll enable even more uh, coordination and focus. Uh, now. Yeah, and just as a bonus, and just to sort of reiterate that, I mean, I think it'll, you know, as Mick said, provide you know provide an opportunity for you know sort of broader audience, and also to be part of something that you know where you know sort of seems a kind of a, a good fit for OS, OSL. Uh, um, OSLC kind of considerations um, to be, you know, sort of to happen and take part. So I think that's, I think it's, you know, the community side is 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 greatly strengthened from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I, um, actually, I might I might switch into uh, some of the slides we have in in the backup. Uh, one slide here, and just to to kind of give a picture um, about the. The vision for for OSLC and what what it might look like after, uh, in a way, I, I think S uh, Steve Spiker likes to say that we're outsourcing our uh, our uh, specification development and infrastructure to Oasis in a way. But a lot of the uh, a lot of the everyday stuff goes on. But again, maybe with that in increased uh, increased ability to to focus on on delivering what needs to be done because of that we're relieved of that burden, as was mentioned uh, by the steering committee members earlier. So, so as far as then um, uh, questions, the, there was a follow-up question from Alan about um, communications and promotion, and is this something that uh, that we will continue to do within OSLC community, or something that the, um, the Oasis will completely handle? Um, my view and my understanding of this is. Oasis does have uh, and will assist us with uh, with marketing and recruiting and and all those kinds of things. Um, however, still the particulars of, uh, of what the messages we're trying to send as OSLC and um, uh, maybe publicizing uh, success cases, whether it's through uh, uh, a, uh, a case study or a uh, white paper, or those types of things. That's still something that the community will work on to and work on and develop. Well, um, Sean, it would be quite interesting to see um, what the um, the participants on this uh, webcast um, um, think of um, you know sort of the join to Oasis. I mean, um, it'd be. Do you think that's um, could everyone sort of just you know does anyone have any particular concerns or anything like that or you know, do they kind of feel that our move to Oasis is going to broaden that community? That's a that's a tricky question to ask, Bola, because uh, someone needs to pipe up first. I, uh, <laughs> or even type it in. Whether they can yeah, you could type it. Um, no, I could even course. try the the middle tab is the uh, you can raise your hand, and so we could ask a question like, do, do you think that? Uh, um, that the move to Oasis will help with um, uh, how, how did you put it, Bola? With increasing uh, yeah, with increasing the community. I mean, we believe yeah. that it will, and I think it's a really good you know good move. But I'm just thinking if the people on the call who have you know joined to sort of listen to this update, whether they kind of feel that that's also something that they like to hear as well. You know. So uh, this is Matt from Ericsson here again. Uh, I think anything that can broaden the community is a good thing, and if always say ACES uh, uh, can definitely lead in that direction. I would probably like to stress still that engaging quite much with some of the main ALM and PLM vendors in the industry, to, to that I think that is even more key, uh, if, I, if you ask me. Uh, and um, uh, it would be a so big proof point if we could get one of the larger, not just the small size, uh, but larger medium size suppliers in the ALM or and or PLM space to to, to add on to the OSLC apart from the heritage from IBM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, uh, I, so go ahead, Matt. Yeah. No, no, that was basically my point there. So. Yeah, and, and Alan had added in the chat that uh, uh, he thinks that it, it, it broadens it, or it will broaden appeal and adoption if um, there are also uh, customers or users of the of the tools that push it, and it's 
promote it in parallel. So I think trying to uh, say the, the kind of effort that uh, that has been done or is being done by by you, Mats, and, and uh, Lumila and others at at Ericsson is is quite uh, quite important to uh, to I guess make the most out of this opportunity that is offered by the, uh, the migration to Oasis. Yes, and, and definitely, I believe us being in the systems industry, we, we, are, we are the ones that would benefit most of the, having the ecosystem growing. Some of the uh, suppliers are perhaps a bit hesitant, so, so uh, I urge other companies that are also out there to, to also mention the, the, the OSLC message with your suppliers, because I think we need to push us in the bigger companies. And if I may augment uh, Bola's question and, and with feedback from Mott there is, I mean, the question is, you know, with the support of that, are there, um, you know, one of the, the ideas was this move was to help attract some of those uh, big vendors as well, but do you, do the people on the call here have uh, certain ones that are important to them that they're w willing to call out, or I guess maybe if not comfortable we can have a side discussion. Um, I think that would be interesting to share as well. Okay, maybe I can uh, add on to the discussion. My name is Martin Thorngren uh, from KTH in Stockholm. I'm in Munich right now with Reiner. I'm representing one of the large European efforts that have been uh, evaluating and using OSNC in the domain of embedded systems. And we are about to wrap up the IFAST project. It will finish this spring. Uh, and thus, we, we do have a lot of experiences in using and applying OSC for embedded systems. And uh, we would be interested in setting up a, a webcast to provide our experiences for the OSC community. We are also planning to organize a Europe well, a conference taking place in Europe in the context of Artemis, where we would uh, very much like to have the OSC community there and other initiatives to share experiences uh, regarding OSC. In particular in the let's say in the connection of, of the life cycle support tradition of OSC and the connection to the embedded systems domain. Uh, and uh, since we have a consortium with a number of industrial partners, we are also trying to figure out how we, in a useful way, can contribute to the OSC community. We are also pushing, we have uh, officially adopted OSC and, and we are promoting it. But uh, uh, when looking at the Oasis organization, uh, we, are, uh, we are now planning a follow-up project and we are thinking about how to, uh, on what level, to contribute uh, concretely to o Oasis. Uh, and we also see uh, uh, community. So, so that's the question I have for you. Um, there are different types of memberships I can see uh, for Oasis, and there are different ways to contribute. We have, for example, been considering of, uh, well, we, we are considering whether we should initiate uh, an embedded systems uh, working group, and these are things we would like to discuss. Do you, do you want me to answer that, or? Yeah, but, uh, yeah go ahead, Reiner. I'll, I will. Uh, I would cer certainly say I'd love to take you up on the offered webcast. Uh, yeah, so that's that's certainly something we can can do not only for the for this one project, but maybe for others as well, and and to share the experiences the the partners have made there with OSLC and. Uh, of course, we, we, keep, we are always open to have new topics, new work groups, uh, and, and uh, if you have ideas, 
how what you want to bring in and uh, what use cases, for example, or scenarios you want to to work on there. Just uh, send us the information, and and we can we are happy to look at it. And and then it's up to the steering committee to decide whether this is could be part of an existing work group or whether a new work group uh, can be initiated. Um, regarding the OASIS, the OASIS memberships and, and, and so on, we definitely have to look into details there, what's necessary for which level of engagement you really need to be a member and so on. So, But that's something you probably have to take offline and it's not uh, uh, fit, uh, will probably not fit in the time frame what we have. We only have a few minutes left here today. So therefore, uh, um, I'm always uh, happy to uh, discuss this with you and, and of course with other partners or with other people on the call uh, today and, and other people interested as well. So please contact us. You see the see our email address up here and we, may, we will make sure that all those questions will get answered and, and we may uh, assign a, a steering committee member to your interest group or your organization you want to work with us and, and uh, share share information and and, uh, and uh, help you to get involved in OSSC. We have time for another question, or do you want to wrap it up, Sean? I yeah. Well, thank you for your answer there. I am. You know, we had only booked an hour, and so I understand that in about a minute, some people will need to be dropping off. Um, if there are others who can say, stay, I don't see any reason why we have to uh, to stop the discussion if there's more discussion to be had. Um, the, the, uh, the telephone's going to keep working and so is the webcast. So. So is there another question that you had lined up right now? Not from our side here. Oh, I see. There was there was one more question in the chat, um, uh, and it, ha had, it's all, it had to do with, um, I guess, who's 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 going to talk to whether these ALM and, and PLM vendors. That, I mean, I, we have said, you know, we're looking to. It's great for end users to be pushing those conversations, and it seems like we're seeing results from that, as was uh, as was mentioned both by Matt and, and Steve. Um, but uh, you know th these things don't happen by themselves, and, and they need some focus. And uh, so, I mean, I, I'll just start with a little answer, and anyone can uh, from the steering committee can jump in further. But uh, as part of the uh, the investigation that was done uh, between uh, December, when when that uh, blog post was uh, kind of set some direction, and today, and it, it continues to go on, um, we have been. Uh, starting conversations with uh, with these vendors, uh, with many vendors. I, I, I'm not going to to name all the names, but uh, with varying degrees of su success, and that continues on and continues to be an effort. But we we are having those discussions, and uh, I think where we have the most success continues to be where we have had uh, some of their clients who have spoken to them about OSLC before. I don't know if anyone wants to add to that or if there is a uh, another question at this point. Like I said, it's a couple minutes past the top of the hour now. Maybe I can add a little bit to this. So talking to vendors is, is an ongoing issue for the steering committee and, and, uh, and others in the, in the community as well. So um, that's definitely something we are, we are looking into and we, we think it's very important. Um, when we come from the community, sometimes we hear by the vendors, oh, we don't have enough requests by our customers. So that's why it's so important to have both sides that you, as a user, as a, and, and I will include me in this case as well, so we are also users of many, many tools from many different vendors. So we, as the users of the tools, we have also have to push them from the user side, but we will certainly stay in, in contact with the vendors as well from the OSSC community and, and talk to them. Unfortunately, we, uh, we, we cannot make this public right now because we have the feeling if we, if we force them too early to uh, 
get visible in, in uh, their OSOC activities, then they may be hesitating even more. So therefore, uh, there's a lot, lot going on behind the scenes, which we cannot share at this moment with you. But uh, again, it's so very, very important that you, from the user side as well, help us in this effort and, and also talk to your vendors. Okay, with that, I, I don't have any other questions in the chat, and uh, I would like to thank everyone who has been on the call and participated in the discussion. Uh, it's been a wonderful discussion. I'm quite happy with how that went, turned out. I'd like to also thank the steering committee uh, and Steve Spiker for uh, presenting the materials today and uh, sharing with the community their uh, thoughts and perspectives. And uh, I would invite everyone to continue the conversation by sending an email to the steering committee if that, uh, if that makes sense to you or reaching out to, uh, uh, to me personally or uh, to Steve Spiker as well through the, um, through the forums on the OSLC website. And uh, I hope this has been useful to you. A recording will be posted and uh, I will send uh, a link to everyone who has registered so that you can share this with other folks who uh, were not able to attend today or who you think the material would be useful for. So thanks again, and I hope you all have a, uh, an excellent day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.